people that are here this evening, city staff, and to those on uh, Coach Go that I'm sure are following in great numbers. Uh, thank you for accepting uh, that we present to you this evening uh, our thoughts of the issue of the storage tanks uh, over the last three weeks. It's my pleasure to present a, well, I'll, what I'll call a newcomer. He's been in town for 10 years. He believed in Cornwall and he thought he would invest in Cornwall. And he now, now owns Kelsey's restaurant and he's a Chamber of Commerce president. Uh, Kevin Hargreaves. Welcome, Kevin. Um, it's not often that on the social side, maybe on the business side, we present together, but uh, I thought it was very important that you hear from somebody else other than Chuck Charlotte. And I'd like, uh, Kevin, if you would start off. As previously mentioned uh, during the peaceful protest down at the site of the tanks, uh, basically the community has just spoken and said that they don't want these things down on the waterfront. There's been great work done for future development down there, and having these storage tanks is an eyesore regardless of what kind of fences or shrubbery or anything else they can think of to try and hide these things. Bottom line is they are not going to be in this moment. They are going to be there. Uh, I know some people who do have uh, units that have caught in lofts. This is an eyesore in their backyard. I know there's more development going on for the other uh, uh, units down there, and they make clear to me and to Chuck that they want us to do our due diligence along with members of council and the city to do what we can to stop us. Thank you. Yeah. Gentlemen, ladies, um, we have an issue before us. Uh, we've been there, we've done that before with previous storage tanks. And uh, I'm going to give you uh, this evening what your fellow citizens believe is going on in this time. I want to highlight um, Ellen Kennedy's presentation at the public meeting. I want to highlight uh, Dick Obrey, who's in Florida right now, couldn't be here. And of course, uh, Ed Lumley and uh, you mentioned a while ago Phil Corey as mayors of the city of Cornwall that are just shaking their heads. Um, also, you heard from Akwesasem. Total disrespect there, and not including them, and uh, in discussions of lands, especially with what's going on in their activities for land claims and, and things of that nature. Councilor Glenn Grant, uh, if I'm going to that meeting tomorrow, you pushed enough buttons to get me there. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, you, were, you listen and uh, you make suggestions and uh, of course now you've got to live with the actions that I'm going to take this evening. I want to highlight... I'm prepared. You're prepared. That's good. <coughs> I want to highlight uh, Ken Bedford, Steve Alexander and Mark Willow because we started, oddly enough, where your clerk comes from, your new clerk, in St. Anne de Bedry some 15 years ago. And uh, in all the cities we visited, and at least 17 of them, we've seen this kind of stuff before, and the actions that people took, and the reasons why they took the actions. Reclaim the lands is what you hear. Leisure activities, you heard some tonight, you'll see all these bicycles down the path. You don't need this stuff. So allow me to follow them. This is what your citizens are saying. At the friendly protest, no, the thanks. We had a public meeting. Attendance was great. The message was clear, no. Media reports, can you believe I have two scrapbooks? This is media reports for the last three weeks. This alone tells you there's a problem. When you get this kind of coverage, it's not because I got a nice face. <laughs> it's because there's an issue there and it's touched off some buttons and some people want some action. Talk shows, polls, one poll, 300 people, not one for this program. Presentations and concern, concerns from historians, from the business community. You 
You heard from the chamber. Not here this evening is another one of our supporters for the large BIA. The city's waterfront committee, your own group that you appointed, okay, said no. People that have spent millions of dollars on the waterfront right now and that are planning to spend millions more in the next year, two, and three, and four, say no. The area residents say no. But guess what? I'm getting calls from Ottawa, from Lancaster. They're laughing. They're, they're wondering, how can this happen in a town like Cornwall going the way you're going? They say no. Our neighbors to the south, I mentioned a while ago, we can't do anything without considering uh, the people from Akwasasmi. 14,000 people approximately live in those three reserves. They shop here in Cornwall. They have land claims. They need to be contacted. They need to be respected. That's what they ask. That's what they fight for. Well, guess what? That's what the people that we talk to say. The movers and the shakers, shakers the community builders, all the volunteers such as John and his group this evening, they're all working to make this town better. That's all we want. And in this exercise, nobody knew nothing. And I'll repeat that. Nobody knew nothing. It's impossible. Okay? But that being the case, City Council took some action last week, two weeks ago, I should say, and we passed the motion with a bylaw. Even that, you had to have a little bit of guts to do that because you knew it was going to create a reaction. So I commend you for that. The main thing, all of council was against this. Period. Legal options. I've never called so many lawyers and asked for so many favors in the last week and a half about what do you do in a case like this. And the bottom line, folks, and we'll talk about it in a minute, it's the lease. All these comments are coming about, and nobody's seen the lease that I know. Well, how can you make a decision based on that? It's not a good business decision, I'm sure. I've had time to discuss this with, and in particular, I now name him, because I asked his permission, John McDonald, and he gave me some advice on some of the things I should talk about tomorrow. But these questions must be answered. It's not a request and please. You must get the answers to that lease. The bottom line, the decision makers, federally and municipally, is no thanks. That's the bottom line. And yes, it's going to cost money, so let's get, let's get to that point. I've even, it's even been suggested that the city should pay for some of that. I don't think so. Now, somewhere down the road, you, your body, the municipal body, and the federal body will have to decide who's going to pay for this. I'll let you have that discussion. I'm not versed in that stuff. This is a total catastrophe. A total breakdown in communications. Not my words, the words of people in the city and at the federal government, a representative at the feds. I've made that statement many times. So here's the action needed. A request from the federal government to stop the issue, to stop work order on this project. Now they've not worked lately. I don't know if that's a stop order or if that was just somebody said, you know. Was there anything more insulting when we had our protest than to have them keep the bulldozers going? Total decision. Well, we gotta make sure, we're suggesting that you make sure, certainly I will, that um, we have we asked for a stop order. The lease must be looked at. There is a policy in this country, freedom of information. We can get that lease. We need the time to review that lease, and the legal minds that be need the time to read it, understand it, and give you some opinion. There was a lease previously for the five storage tanks that were there. 
Uh, Paul Fitzpatrick pulled that out for me uh, before he, uh, a couple of years before he left, and I believe it, uh, it's with planning department. Now, people will say, well, what, what, what good does that lead to? Well, first of all, it tells us what language they usually speak on their federal leases. I don't understand where they're coming from. What kind of clauses applied there before that do they apply now? We don't know. Are there any conditions in the present lease that says they can build three more tanks, two more? Is there any conditions in the current lease that say we can store other products there? We don't know. The lease we need is that copy of that lease that we need to understand. There's, uh, there was mentioned by somebody that, oh, it's only for 10 years. <coughs> My good God, can you imagine if that lease has 10 years plus an option to have 10 more? From a business point of view, you would think you want to amortize that over 20 years. You don't want to pay all your costs up front. So it would make sense, but then again, we don't know. Our citizens want answers. And that's where the pressure is, unfortunately, or fortunately, or whatever, is on you people. You're the ones that are going to fight this case tomorrow in Ottawa, and hopefully down the road. And I don't know what you've done uh, with your legal counsel or where you're at with that, and uh, I'll leave that in your good hands. But my role tomorrow is to express what I've done tonight and to ask City Council to reaffirm their position of two weeks ago. And that it's very clear they don't want the tanks. I want to touch on this one thing in closing, Mr. Mayor. There's blame here, blame there. It doesn't matter anymore. Who didn't advise who or whatever. Mistakes were made. Who, we don't know. What we do know is that the condition we have today is not the one we want. And that's what we must focus on. And that, I think, is the message you got to clearly state. Clearly state that regardless of who made the mistake, it's not the best land use for the citizens of the city of Cornwall and our residents to the south. I, again, I want to thank Kevin for being here this evening uh, with me. And, uh, I'm sure that he's ready to answer any questions if you so happen.